Whatever you're going through, you will get through it because you're here. And that means you are not alone. This is The Meaningful Meeting. Now your host, Ace Cannon. The Meaningful Meeting. We might have to change this to uh, call it How I've Screwed Up So You Don't Have To. If you don't know, this is where we meet each week to try to work our way through whatever it is in life that we're going through. At least that's that's what I'm trying to do. I, uh, I give you unfiltered access to my life. I give you unfiltered access to my mind in the hopes that you find a way to take the information and ideas that I share and make your life better. Because it doesn't seem to be working for me lately. <laughs> Um, someone asked me on Instagram the other day who had listened to the last edition of the meaningful meeting, why I share so much of my life here. And it's very simple. It's because this makes me feel better. It makes me feel better to think that by sharing someone else might find a way through whatever it is that they're going through. And I don't know what that might be. I don't know what it is that you're looking for by coming here every day now or every week. I would love to know because I would love to hear from you. I've gotten some great feedback and it touches my heart. It makes me feel good. And over the course of the next couple of weeks, I think we're going to go through some things that really um, weigh heavy on me. Because I'm working through some things that I think are very relatable to a lot of people. And we're going to go into some deep stuff over the course of the next couple of weeks, I believe. Especially next week. Um, I'm kind of at a crossroads in my life. And I've got to make some very tough decisions. And I've got to make some very important decisions because it affects not just the rest of my life but the rest of the lives of some people that are very close to me, some people that I care about very much, and I have to make these decisions. So we kind of start this week with dealing with, you know, one of the things that, that, that I have come to realize and really just recently come to realize it has such a heavy impact on my life. It is such a weight that I am bearing in my life. That it's slowing me down. And that's guilt. Today, we're talking about guilt. And again, remember, I'm going to share a lot of me with you. And I don't have any answers. I have some ideas. If I had answers, I would have done it for myself already. Now, sometimes I think we can look at something objectively and it's easy to come up with answers for other people or much easier to come up with answers for other people because I don't think we can always look at our lives objectively. It's always subjective to some certain extent. And so I am really beginning to try to process a couple of things in my life. And one of them is guilt. Now, um, let me preface this by saying I, I've had a really good life. So I'm not complaining I'm proud of a lot of things that I have been able to accomplish. And I'm proud of the people that I've accomplished them with and the life that I've built with people and the things that I've done to help people, things that I've been involved in to help people. None of this stuff was all done by myself by any stretch of the imagination. But I'm just using me because it's easier to explain. So I've really had a good life, a blessed life. But the past few years have been very difficult, very difficult. And it seems like every year gets more difficult than the last. And that's how we came to this. That's how we came to the meaningful meeting. Because somehow if I can say something that helps you, I believe that helps me. And maybe this is a way of cheap therapy for me. I just come here and do all the talking and uh, nobody pushes back, but it allows me to kind of get some stuff out of my head. So again, no complaints here. I've had a great life, some great accomplishments, but I don't care what it is you're living with, what it is you're going through, what it is you're dealing with. If you've got guilt in your life, it's slowing you down. It's weighing you down. 
whatever it is in life in general that is weighing heavy on your heart right now, there's probably on some level some guilt involved. I saw this great meme the other day and I printed it out so I could bring it today. And here's what it says. Well, if I can find it, I just printed it out. Here it is. Being a dad is great, but they never tell you about the mental battle that you fight with yourself. And here's some examples. Dad guilt, not being enough for them. Feeling like you fell short. Did you play enough today with them? Why did you lose your temper on them like that? I could have been even better. Exactly. I carry a lot of guilt in my life from a lot of different things. And like I said, I would guess that if you are struggling with something in your life, there's some guilt involved right now. I got a lot of guilt in my life. And I've done a lot of time in therapy talking to therapists about the things that I feel guilty for because I just don't have this ability to let go of mistakes that I've made. I don't have the ability to let go of bad decisions that I made. I don't have the ability, most importantly, and this is key, right out of the box, I have never had in my life the ability to forgive myself for anything. And it literally wakes me up at night. It's tough. I hate it. Um, there are times that I think because of the things that I've done, God has punished me. God has made my life harder because of things that I've done. And preachers and therapists would say, that's not how it works. That's not necessarily true. And I would say, well, I carry this burden in my heart and in my head always. And it's tough. Um, I feel guilty over my kids. I feel guilty over, I, I feel guilty for a, over a child that I don't even have yet. My son Dax, it's coming in June. I'm already feeling guilty over that. I feel guilty for a lot of things in my life. And a, most of it stems from my own inability to forgive myself for things that I've done wrong or not even wrong, things that I've just made bad decisions on because it always seems to affect other people because I'm responsible for a lot of people. And this is a tough one for me. Man, if there was anything I could say to you today that would make your life better, it's first and foremost, please, I want you to be able to forgive yourself. You give an example. You know, probably you do, but if you don't, my daughter died almost three years ago. It'll be three years ago, July 29th. She'd been 21 for three, three weeks. She died in a car crash late at night, about less than a mile from her house. She was going to spend the night at her mom's house. And I look back on that. And my daughter went through some, some tough things some illnesses, some different things that she dealt with when she was in high school. And my marriage began to fall apart her first semester of her freshman year of high school. And by her second semester, I had moved out of the house. And her mom and I were working on things. And in my opinion... My inability to figure out a way to make everything work hampered her growth. And it may be why she didn't want to go off to college right off the bat. 
not even across town to UNC Charlotte. She felt a little leery about making a step that big. She went through a lot of stuff that maybe I'll tell you about one day. I've never really talked about it. And maybe that's part of the processing, part of my inability to, to, to forgive myself and why I blame myself so much for the difficulties that she had. It's because I don't talk about it. I don't share it openly with people. But I have always felt like that's on me. That's on me. I could not figure out a way to make that situation work. And she had a tough go for a couple of years, really tough go for a couple of years. Dealt with some health issues and some other things that she, for all of her love and the joy and the the way she lit up a room when she walked in. She was struggling under, you know, without anybody else really even knowing about it. And I've always taken the blame for that. And I think I always will. I don't know how to let go of that. And then when your child dies, this is the natural reaction, is that now it's multiplied, it's manifested itself into so many other things. Had I figured out a way to make that work, would her life have been better when she was in high school? Would that have led her to make some, some different decisions? And would she still be alive today? Let me tell you right now. That, my friends, as some of you probably sadly know, has a heavy burden to bear. And that's a tough one. And no matter how many therapists how many preachers or how many people in general tell me that is not the case, that is not true. I kind of know that, but I have never forgiven myself. And that is tough, man. That's one I struggle with a lot. It's one of the biggest sources of guilt that I have. You know, anytime your child dies, I think you always question yourself and say, man, if I had been better, would this have not happened? Whew. It's hard for me to even say and talk about that, you know? Um, I feel guilty because I'm angry at myself that as much as I was there, and even though I was separated, divorced, and everything, you know, my I was there all the time. I was constantly there with my kids. I saw my kids all the time. You know, Peyton came and lived with me for for a while when she was out of high school, and I was always seeing my son. We played ball in the you know, we played ball in the in the in the 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 driveway all the time. I coached his teams, you know, all the time. Even after his mother, I split up. But I just wonder, you know, my, 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 my things that I worry about with him, are those because I couldn't figure out a way to keep it together? And then I look at this blessing that I have in my life now with Amanda and Dax. And if you want to really get into it, let's get into it. Because I think you're probably dealing with some similar stuff. Over the course of the past few years, we've been in the process of reinventing ourselves as a show, as a podcast, as a radio show. And in doing so, that takes a lot. There's a heavy financial burden that you pay for that. Because I have, let's just say, other responsibilities that I have encountered or did encounter previous to, you know, even knowing Amanda, you know, financially, it's not easy right now while we're in the process of reinvention. I'm making a considerable sum less money than I used to make. That's my fault. I'm dealing with it. It's on me because I'm the one that has the, you know, um, I've got a lot of people to take care of, let's say. So now there's Amanda 
and this child coming and you want to feel guilt, I'm already feeling guilty and worry that I won't be able to give Dax all of the things that I was able to give Peyton and Kate. I'm feeling guilty for something that hasn't even happened yet. And I don't even know that it will. And I wake up at night. Sometimes I wake up, well, two nights ago, I woke up and I was just sweating. 11.45, wide awake. I've been asleep about three hours. And these are the things that the moment I wake up, they start popping. And my point to you is really simple, man. Don't be me. I say it every week. I say it right here. Every single week. Don't be me. Because you gotta for, you, you've got to find a way to forgive yourself. Please do that. And then tell me you did that. So maybe it helps me forgive myself. Because that's one of the key hurdles that I have um, in my life, you know? Um, I feel guilty that in my mom's last days, that in my mom's last couple of months, I was not in a position financially to do for her what I wanted to do for her. When for years and years, for a couple of decades, before she really needed it. I mean, I helped her along the way, surprised her with things and did stuff like that always, always, always wanted to help my mom and help repay her for what she gave to me. But then, man, at the end, she really needed help. She really, really, really needed me. And I wanted to do more stuff for her to help make her comfortable. As Alzheimer's kind of took control of her and things started really getting difficult. I felt, feel guilty that I wasn't able to do more to make her comfortable. I don't know. Maybe I feel that I was feel guilty that I wasn't able to do more to help her find a way to be better a little bit longer. You know what I mean? Um, and in that way, many times I, my sister did, you know, she bore the burden of that with my mom. And I feel guilty that I didn't have the, 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 the resources at the time, like I had had for a long time before, a long time. I didn't, didn't have the resources to do f for her and make that burden a little bit easier. You know what I mean? I feel guilty that I didn't have... Uh, I, handle, I feel guilty I didn't handle a few things differently in life because it would have not just made my life better, but also the lives of others around me. And if you take this and get in, you know, you see what this does now. It's this swirling. It just goes, 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 goes. You know, and you wake up and this goes through your head 24 hours a day and you're trying to put things back on track and be the best person you can possibly be. And you just keep dragging yourself down. And it's all because I am incapable of fully forgiving myself for anything. And I have to figure out a way to make that work because it's really driving me crazy. And one of the things that I always think about when I've talked to my kids and everything is just saying, hey, you know, look, you can't change the past. That's over. All you can do now is keep moving forward. Be better. If you feel you owe someone an apology, apologize. If you feel there's something you could do to make it a little better, do it. If you analyze the situation, you have to be able to, to ask yourself, or do two things. Number one, ask yourself, is there anything I can do about this now? Odds are the answer is no. And if that's the case, let it go. You have to. You have to. Because you can't change what has already happened. Now, see, I sit here and I tell you that. And I know that. I know that's right. I know that's what you're supposed to say because it's right. And yet, I am incapable of doing that. 
That's probably why I'm talking to you about it now. Because I'm hoping that you don't do it. And maybe you tell me that you didn't do it and you're able to let something go. And lift some of that burden off of you. And that will make me feel good about myself. And it will help me lift some of the burden off of me. That's how this works. As sad and twisted as that might sound. Guilt leads to anger. Guilt will make you angry at yourself. And that will eat you up from the inside. And I am living proof of that. I hope you're not feeling a little shell-shocked right now. <laughs> I mean, this is as real as it gets. And again, it's important to me to talk about these things because I want it to be better for you. I want you to be happy with whatever life may hold for you. Because like I've said so many times, that's what helps me. I've learned something, and I don't understand this about my life. I don't know why this is. But doing something that makes other people happy, that's one of the things that really makes me happy in life. And they're little things. You know, people I care about, people I just, I don't care about. If it makes them happy, it makes me feel good. And maybe that makes me relieve some of the guilt that I feel. And that I've felt for years, things I've carried with me for decades. So you, you got to do something. Don't let it eat you up. Learn to forgive yourself. And remember, if there's nothing you can do about it now, you have to forgive yourself and let it go. And if there's something you feel you can do to make it right, you got to really take a look at that and see if that's something worth doing, because it probably is. I have an offer for you in today's final five minutes. Yes, an offer, a thought and a rather interesting offer. Next. There's more of The Meaningful Meeting next. This is the one meeting that reminds you each week that you are not alone. This is The Meaningful Meeting with Ace Cannon. All right, so this is the fun part for me because I just want you to know your response, your feedback, your thoughts kind of keep me moving, keep me going. And let me give you a couple of ideas. I've printed out a couple of things. Um, and if you don't know, you can always watch the Meaningful Meeting. If you're hearing it as a podcast, you can always watch it on our YouTube channel, Ace TJ TV on YouTube. Um, and you can download the podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, you can always download it as a podcast anywhere that you download uh, podcasts. Um, but I'll, I, I shouldn't know if I should say this guy's name. I'll say Jeremy. Okay. Uh, Jeremy said, hey, just wanted to reach out and let you know how much I enjoy the Meaningful Meeting podcast. Today marks one day since I lost my father and one of my best friends. You're right. We are all going through things. It feels good to hear somebody talk about their life and situations that they're going through. I just wanted to let you know I appreciate what you're doing. Longtime Ace and TJ fan here. That's, I mean... That's all I could ask for. That's that's everything to me when it comes to doing this. Uh, Jim said, just listen to the latest episode. I always appreciate your willingness to be open and share with all of us. I often feel the same. Why is life such a struggle? We talked about this last time. Boy, I'm dealing with that right now. I'm dealing with some things in my life right now as well, and it feels like such a struggle. And yet, like you, I have so much to be grateful for. That he puts in all caps, so much. And he shared with me his morning devotion. And it's a long passage, so I won't read the whole thing. But here's how Jim concludes. I do believe that God has, all caps, not given up on you or me. There are greater things at work than we currently know or may ever know. His ways are greater than ours. So we, you and I, just keep putting one foot in front of the other, moving forward as we press on to the mark that awaits us. 
I know, man. I know. I know, I know, I know. And what's interesting is I just this week made an effort, a real effort, a legit effort to um, reconnect with God. I had gotten to a point that I was, uh, and we'll talk about this a lot next week. I got to a point where I've been angry with everybody in my life for a while. And that includes God. And for a long time, I wouldn't admit that. And it was, I just wasn't sure how to handle it. I wouldn't admit it. Uh, and a friend of mine gave me some really great words that were very helpful that I'll get into uh, next week when we talk about anger. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with that. I, you may not be a religious person, but God's played a pretty big role in my life at various times. And I've got to go back and trust that process. And I've got to go back and trust God. <laughs> i got to go back. <laughs> it's guilt. I've got to go back and apologize for some of my anger, you know. Um, but I'm working on it. So here's my offer for you real quick today in the final five minutes. We'll get into some other stuff next week. But here's my, here's my offer to you. What about a live edition of The Meaningful Meeting? Now, I don't know what that looks like, what it would feel like, how many people. I don't know anything about that. This is just an idea that is in the smallest, most embryonic stage I can possibly put together. What about a live edition of The Meaningful Meeting? Would you be interested in that? Would you be interested in attending? Would you be interested in participating? There could be some, you know, Q&A kind of stuff going on and people just talking and sharing in addition to whatever it is that I come up with, talk about with. Uh, let me hear from you because this is something that weighs heavy on me these days. I'm curious if you would like that. I'm curious if you think there would be something in it to put together a live edition of The Meaningful Medium because as I said, the thought that somebody might gain some help from my words, my experiences, helps me because I am terrible at handling all of these things that you have heard about. And that's why we're here. That's why this whole thing exists. That's I've said before. So please good, bad, or otherwise, um, you can do it through the show or you can do it through my Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, it's ace at large, uh, is on Instagram and Twitter. And let me check that on my Instagram real quick. and make sure that my Instagram handle is Ace at Large. I haven't looked at that in so long. I don't even know. Yes, it's Ace at Large. Uh, my Twitter and Instagram are Ace at Large. My Facebook is David Ace Cannon. Um, there's two of them. Go to the one that has a picture of me holding up a Peyton's Promise jersey. The other one's some old music stuff that I had. So anyway, think about the positive things in your life this week. Think about the good things you've done. Think about the things that you're proud of, that you've accomplished, and the people that you've helped. And let that alleviate some of the guilt that you feel. Because I know it's tough, man. And I hope I haven't freaked you out too much by sharing some of the stuff that I've shared today. But only share because remember, the thing we talk about every week, one day you will tell your story of how you've overcome what you're going through right now. And it will become part of someone else's survival journey. I really hope so. I really hope so, because that's why I'm here every week. We'll see you next week. Now, whatever you're going through, you're not alone. You are a part of the Meaningful Meeting, presented by the Radio Network. Copyright ATJ, Inc. 2022.